How's everyone doing? Welcome back to another NBA Draft Prospect Breakdown here on the Basketball Zone Cowbell Kingdom YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. Today we are discussing a very tantalizing, if everything hits, type of prospects. And yes, we have those every single year, and we're talking about Keon Johnson from Tennessee. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Boy, oh boy, Keon is a tough prospect to evaluate because you see his insane upside, but you also see the things he needs to improve on before he becomes a solid NBA player. And when you're talking about a potential top 10 pick, you must highlight his major weaknesses. But before we begin with his weaknesses, let's start off with his strengths. He's one of the most explosive athletes in this draft and has a lot of good defensive versatility. His motor is extremely high, which is always a great thing to have, and I love it when it pops out on the screen the way it does. He's a player I can see guarding one through three and making it tough because of his defensive hound mentality and lateral quickness. He recovered well on defense, which I love because if he gets beat, he has the ability to pin that ball against the glass and make a game-changing momentum play, which are needed especially in the playoffs. And when we discuss prospects, we're kind of basing them off of what will they be in a playoff series for a good championship contender team, or not even championship, it was more of a playoff contending team. I love the fact that he's always willing to take a charge and put his body on the line defensively. He changes speeds very well as a driver and is actually a solid off-ball cutter. He wants to get to his mid-range jumper, which is also solid and fluid. He has a nice high release point on his mid-range jump shot and gets good elevation. I liked how Tennessee used his lateral quickness off of curls to put him in a good position to either rise up for his mid-range shot or attack the basket where he could use his two-foot explosive leaping ability. He has the right tools in transition to be very good despite struggles in that area. I believe that's something he will improve right off the bat in the NBA just based on adding more strength to his frame to go along with that great athleticism. Now, let's talk about his weaknesses. Actually, let me tell you who he reminds me of. And it's not necessarily a bad thing yet, but let's put an asterisk on that. But he reminds me of Nasir a little from the Portland Trailblazers, an insane athlete with a high motor on defense and good defensive qualities, but hasn't seen much run in Portland. And that's strange because that team needs exactly what he provides, which is defensive versatility on the wing. But for whatever reason, he can't get off the bench. Is that a concern? Yes, absolutely. Even though he slipped in the draft, he was regarded as a top five pick going into North Carolina. The same weaknesses Keon Johnson has, which are shooting from three, fill for the game, and turnovers are the same areas of improvements Nasir had and probably still has because he can't get off the bench on a terrible defensive team like the Blazers. So either his defense is fine, but his lack of offensive versatility has outweighed his defensive versatility. It's a fair assumption. And once again, two years later, we are saying the same things about Keon which are if he ever develops a consistent jumper, watch out. I agree with that, but it's a high risk, high reward type of deal with him. I do think he has a better feel for the game than Nasir did, but Nasir is taller and has a longer wingspan, which contributes to his defensive versatility, if anything. So I don't know if there is an advantage per se when comparing these two as prospects. What worries me about Keon are his misses. They are all over the place, which tells you he needs to really work on his jumper from beyond the arc. Maybe he goes to a great development franchise and figures it out, but that doesn't take away from the fact that he's a high risk prospect with a high ceiling, but low floor. That's why it's so tough to evaluate him into the top 10 for me, because I love his toughness and grit, his passion for the game, his willingness to win, but his weaknesses are glaring. I can maybe justify him going nine or 10, but definitely not top eight with what I've seen. 
He's more of a 12 to 20 guy who can pay big dividends for a team that's a playoff contender. But yet again, Nasir Little did go to a playoff contender. So it's truly a high risk, high reward. I feel like I've said that a lot, but it's truly going to depend on where he goes. Let's move on to the three teams I would like for him to get drafted to and three teams I wouldn't. He makes a lot of sense on the Knicks, on the Lakers, Pacers, and Kings. All of these teams need a player with his type of defensive motor and versatility. But are the Kings and Pacers willing to take the risk in the lottery? I'm not sure. I know the Knicks and Lakers would in a heartbeat, as they should. I don't know if there is a team that I wouldn't want him to go to because he fits the prototype 3 and D type player. But yet again, when you think about 3 and D, he doesn't have the 3 yet, although he does have the D. Can he develop into that? I believe he can, but the real question is how long will it take him? And that's always a concern for teams drafting in the lottery. And I also don't want him going to a situation where it really hurts his stock and it hurts his confidence early on as a young NBA player. So in conclusion, I do believe he will get drafted in the lottery, which is top 14, but I just don't know where. But all it takes is one GM to believe in the scoring upside, and he very well could go as high as six, but I wouldn't bet on it. Oh man, this is like pulling hairs, man. I love his defensive versatility. I love his game, his passion. Again, I'm being repetitive, but it's so difficult for me to evaluate his game and, and just give a bull prediction because I don't want to come off across as, oh, Leo's being too harsh or Leo's being too biased towards his game. I like his game, but I always have to think about what is the need of a team and where is his draft prospect at currently in his career. We only know what we know, which is what we're basing it off of his game at Tennessee and then whatever intel we have, which I don't have much intel of him, uh, like I did with Jalen Green and Kaminga, which again, it's I think I'm two videos away from doing Jonathan Kaminga. So when we bring all these factors together is how I eventually come up with this video, this evaluation of his game, of his strengths and his weaknesses. Again, I really do like him and I hope nothing but the best for him. I personally wouldn't draft him in the top 10, but again, he's very tantalizing. So I wouldn't be shocked if he did go in the top 10, but it's a high risk, high reward. I know I've said that a thousand times in this video, but that's how I feel. He's such a difficult prospect to evaluate. Let me know in the comments below if you feel the same way, or if there is some that I'm not seeing that you see and you're like, hey, Leo, this is what I think he's gonna be. There's a better comparison for him. You know, this development NBA team can actually, you know, make him into what we think he could potentially be. Where will he be in three years? Where will he be next season? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And for more NBA draft prospect breakdowns, make sure you keep it here on the Basketball Zone YouTube channel. Thank you guys on behalf of the entire Basketball Zone Cowboy King family. I'll see you on the next one.